Hey, we're back with more science experiments, but this time they have big reactions. Hey, Munch, have you ever seen elephant toothpaste? No. Well, that's what we're making today. We have food coloring to make it fun. We have some hydrogen peroxide, some dish soap, two empty water bottles, a measuring cup, stirrer, some safety goggles for Munch, just in case something splashes up. And then we have some yeast. This is gonna help with the big eruption that we're going to look at. All right, are you ready? Yeah. All right, here we go with the measurements. We filled up the water bottles with a half a cup of hydrogen peroxide. Now we're going to color it for some fun. So Munch, pick out your food coloring for each of the bottles. Blue. And yellow. Awesome. Open this up and we need a tablespoon of that. Ugh. Doing good, much? Okay, and so now we need it in the yellow. So now in this container, we are going to mix our yeast with some warm water. We need one tablespoon of yeast and two to three tablespoons of warm water. Three, now stir it up real good. So we have the yeast all mixed up and then we have the yellow hydrogen peroxide sitting in this little tin can so that when it erupts, it doesn't mess up our countertop. Are you ready, Munch? You wanna count down? Yes. Three, two, one, go. And look at it. It's coming out. Look at it, it's a big eruption, foamy, right? Yeah, it's kind of like the fizzy planets and the exploding soda combined. Yes. Now this, guys, is the safe way to do it because there is another way to do it with a bigger eruption. But with the other chemicals, you have a heat component to it, which is not good for kids. But this one is pretty cool to touch, right? You like it? Yeah. All right, Munch, are you ready to erupt the blue one? Yeah. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Whoa. Look at that, it's pretty cool. Look, it's still oozing out. So we did have a pretty good big eruption. If we squeeze it, oh. uh, I dumped it all out. <laughs> Try with the yellow one. No, should I? All right, here we go. Ooh, it's dumped. Awesome sauce. Well, this was a fun experiment. You guys can see why it's called elephant toothpaste because it comes out like it's toothpaste. And elephants have huge teeth compared to us, right, Munch? Mm. All right, pretty cool experiment. The reaction occurs when the hydrogen peroxide breaks down into water and oxygen with the help of the enzyme catalase, which is found in living organisms, in this case, the yeast. The oxygen is then captured by the dish soap, creating foamy bubbles that expands and escapes from the bottle. The foam and bottle will feel warm due to the exothermic reaction, which is the release of energy as heat. What are you playing with? Rubber band. Hey, that's one of the items we need for our next science experiment. We are going to make a snake bubble, but because you like the video game slither.io, we're calling this Bubble.io. What do we need, Munch? So we need some water, some food coloring. We have dish soap, we have a plate, we have a top of a bottle, we have a sock, and we have rubber bands. Awesome. All right, well, we're not going to do any measurements for this one, we can, but we're just gonna eyeball it. So what I need you to do is to squeeze some dish soap into the plate. Okay, I think that's way too much. Let's see. Okay, you can do a little bit more. Let's get a little bit more. 
Do you think that's about two tablespoons? Yes. All right, now pour a tiny bit of water. Like yeah. All right, so now that we have our bubble solution ready, we're gonna slide that to the side and we're going to create our bubble blower. So what we need to do, Munch, is put your old sock over, whoa, the cut side of the water bottle, like that. Now, we can cut this off, but it's not necessary. We'll just keep it like that and I'll show you how we can fix that. But then we're going to put a rubber band. We just need one. I know you have that extra one over there to play with, but this one right here just to keep the sock in place. Now, this is the part where you're going to blow out the bubbles, but we don't want the sock in your way, right? So let's just roll this down. We can cut it, but we're just gonna roll it. Keep it simple. There we have it. So this will be your blower. Now what we're going to do is put some food coloring on here to make our bubbles colorful, not just plain white. So now to make sure we get some good bubbles, just put a tiny bit of drops or a zigzag on top of it. Not a whole lot. Perfect. All right, now what you have to do, pick it up, dip it in there, and start to blow. Keep deep. Get blow. Keep blowing. Whoa. Look at it, it's growing, keep blowing. Look how big it's growing. It's crawling all on our countertop. And it's still going. Wow, so we're used to just having one little bubble. Now we have big rows and stacks and slivers of bubbles. Awesome, right? Yeah. It's a mountain. A mountain of bubbles. Whoa, you made a wall of bubbles. It's not even a snake much. The snake slithers, like the snake ones are stacked on top of each other. Oh, look at it. Each small gap in the sock's fabric is like a bubble blowing tube. With countless of small gaps in the fabric, it blew out a myriad of neatly arranged bubbles. What is a bubble? A bubble is just air wrapped in soap film. Soap film is made from soap and water. The outside and inside surfaces of a bubble consist of soap molecules with a thin layer of water between the two. Sort of like a water sandwich with soap molecules for bread. Hey Munch, do you remember our science experiment called the rising candle? Yeah. Well, that's similar to what we're doing here, except the water's not gonna rise. We're gonna have the water burst up in the air. So I'm calling this science experiment the booming water. We need mason jar, water, we colored it just to make it fun, and then we need a candle, your safety goggles, and the special ingredient that's different from the rising candle, which is perfume. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is spray some of the perfume into the mason jar. Now we're placing the candle into the water. It should float. And now this part is for the adults like before I'm going to light the candle. So the last part is to cover it up with the jar. Whoa! Whoa, did you see that? It just splattered. And guess what? The candle did go up on the top. But that was pretty awesome, right? Yeah. And all because we added some, whoa, perfume to the mix. As the candle burns, it will create heat and produce combustion gases. 
The heat from the candle causes the perfume that was sprayed inside the jar to evaporate and the vapors will begin to fill the jar. As vapors gather, they increase pressure within the jar until it is released into the water. Well, we hope you like these cool experiments. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.